It was hot weather and everything, just a piece of a cloud in the sky. And he heard a voice like a thunder telling the cloud, go to that garden and water it. He mentioned a specific name. The man was shocked. Look, who is that? He didn't see nothing. He followed that cloud until it reached that spot. It rained all the water in that track, and that track took it to that garden. He went to the owner of that garden and said, what's your name? So my name so and so. Why are you asking? He said, Wallahi, I heard a voice commanding and ordering this cloud to come to your land specifically and drop all the water in your garden. Can you tell me what are you doing that Allah made that? He told me, what are you saying is true? What I do with this, the crop that I have, one third for my living, one third to invest it back in the land, that will give the crop next year, and one third for the sake of Allah donating. Authentic hadith, narrated by so many imams like Al Hakim, and authenticized by Imam Al Albani, radiallahu anhu, wa Al Silsila Hadith, Al Silsila Al Sahiha. Authentic hadith. What do I learn from this hadith? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no way if I do something for his sake, not to replace it. I was showing the Sheikh Omar when I was having lunch with him. I show him one person just to share with you. If somebody comes every day to the masjid and give $250,000, $250, how much do you think his income is going to be? Roughly. Every day he comes, you put $250 over here. How much is going to make a day? Huh? How much is he making per day? Every, a day, yeah. Every day he comes. Oh, seven, seven, so you said one third, right? Yeah. Well, whatever. Okay, maybe thousand. Maybe thousand. How about if somebody giving $2,500 every day? $2,500. Huh? Maybe, maybe $10,000. Okay. How about somebody $25,000? Every day. How about is giving 250,000 every day? Now the last question. How about is somebody giving a fourth a million every day? I think it's a joke. It's not. Is it true or not? Somebody in Britain, but he's not a Muslim. He donate every day for charities and orphans and widows and of the 2.1 million uh, British pound, which is two and a half million dollars on a daily basis. In a daily basis, that much he donate for sake of Allah. You think that he was from a wealthy family, right? No. He's the son of immigrant from Jamaica, migrated from Jamaica to London. And his father was a mechanic. He was not a big businessman. This man, when you read his biography, it's in the internet. His name is Chris Hahn. Put it. Now he is in the rank of Duke. You know what Duke? The royal family. They put him in the royal family. From son of immigrant to be a duke. He says something. 
I wish that he's a Muslim. He talks Quranic talk, even he's not Muslim. He said, I was miserable all my life until I started to donate. I felt what happiness is. He said, there is no way to donate something for sake of Allah and not to replace it to you. But conditional. What the conditions? Don't test Allah. Don't donate to trial. I'm going to see. I'm going to give a thousand. I'm going to see Allah will put it back to me. Once you are testing Allah, you fail. You have to do it with confidence. Allah is testing you. You don't test Allah. That's what he said. If you are testing Allah, it's not going to work. No matter how much you donate. Because you are testing Allah. You have to go through the test yourself. That Allah will grade you. Will let you pass. That's what he said. He said, when I see the poor and the needy outside, not because Allah wants them to poor and the needy, because I myself, I'm not giving them a right. All that's from Quran. He is multi-billionaire. Two and a half million dollars every day he donates. The son of immigrant. I'm the son of immigrant. I'm immigrant myself. I wish my son will be like that. Yeah, Ikhwan. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give it will shock people in Allah adhash but have you come Allah just to remind myself and to remind you that don't fear to donate for the sake of Allah have the confidence that Allah is going to replace it there's no way Allah not to do it there's no way Allah to break his promise man yukhridullah qardan hasana who's going to Give Allah a loan. He didn't say donate. A loan that means going to be paid back. So Allah will never break his promise. But make your intention your need. Now, this is my reminder. You know, now my talk is about how to raise children to be Muslim or only practicing Muslim in the West. How many of you have a children? Raise your hand. How many of you have children? All of you, mashallah, have children, and they are worrying how to raise them to be a well pressing Muslim. In Alhamdulillah, in Ahmadu, Hamdan Tayyib, and Mubarak, and Fika, my Hubu Yarba, when Sully, when Sully, Mala Sayyid, and Musaleen, and Khatam, and Nabiyin, and Sayyid, and Muhammad bin Abdullah, at the Musalat of the Taslim. Allah, my Limna, my Fan, and Fan, my Lamtana, and my Lamtana, and Hujjat, and Lena, Hujjat, and Alayna. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us as a human being, he didn't leave us misguided. He wants us to be guided and everything we need in this life that had been provided. We should not worry how to raise our children anywhere, whether in the west or the east or the north or the south. Yes, I can raise my children in any nation, in any region, and they will be well practicing a Muslim if I follow this instruction. It's from the Quran. All my researches is based on the Quran and supported by authentic hadith. I'll never tell you anything. You heard my khutbah? It's based on the Quran. My talk will be based on the Quran, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan, brother. May Allah accept <clears throat> How many of us read Surah Al-Kahf yesterday? What's Surah Al-Kahf? Allah is not a story narrator and not a movie producer. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling me an incident happened in the Quran is something I to implement it in my life. Is something I to use in my life. What Surah Al-Kahf is about? The cave, the cavern, whatever you call it. So about the youth. So about the youth. Do you think that 
not the people the cavern is amazing story no it's not an amazing story it's a fact نحن نقص عليك نبأهم بالحق we're gonna tell you and narrate to you their news not the story نبأ is a news the story it may be fabricated huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over here he said a news Naba hmm? for fact it happened nobody has to doubt it Bilhaq justly I'm going to tell you their news justly what do you need more confirmation than that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the biggest confirmation to learn something out of it then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started to talk إِنَّهُمْ فِتْيَةٌ آمَنُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ Was it now for them? They are youth that they are mu'min, believer. But we increase them by the knowledge. We increase their iman. إِنَّهُمْ فِتْيَةٌ آمَنُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ Was it now for them? Allah is admitting they are true faithful believer. But that's not enough. Was it now Huda? Now we have to do our duty. We're gonna increase their iman by guidance. And what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do to them? Number one, what he did? Fadarabna ala adanihim fil kafsin adada. I blocked their hearing for so many years. Then what else? Close the eyes. What ahsabun aykadar wa hamrukud? You think they are they are awake, but they are asleep. Close the vision. The whole physiology is working. The only physiology that been stopped is what? Hearing and vision. They are alive, they are breathing, the blood, everything is working. We flip them left and right. They are moving. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blocked the hearing and the vision? Those are the sources of education. How do you learn? You listen, you read. If there's another way to learn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want those youth to protect their education. He want them to protect their iman education. Whatever they learned from the father, from the mother, from the masjid, from the sheikh, Allah doesn't want to be contaminated by the external knowledge. Allah wants us used to hear. He doesn't want you to go outside and hear jingle bells, jingle bells, Merry Christmas. He doesn't want him to look and see a rabbit laying eggs in the Easter. I don't know how a rabbit can lay eggs, but that's what I see. A rabbit and eggs. How do they rabbit eggs? I don't know. The rabbit is a mammal. The bird lay eggs. I don't know. <laughs> Something. So, Allah doesn't want them to see Christmas tree at their homes. How many Muslims they will have a Christmas tree at their homes? Those two things. We have to protect their education, their knowledge. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Fa'u ilal kahf. Stay in your cave. Are you telling me, Sheikh, I want to put my son and my daughter in a cave? No. Here is our cave. Air conditioned and carpet and he and comfortable. That's all it takes. <clears throat> Instead of going to public, and contaminate their knowledge. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after that, he talked about the Prophet Musa, 
what the link between the Prophet Musa incident and the youth. Allah is telling me something. No matter how much a person is educated and no matter how much the person is piety, when it's come to logic and common sense, it may have contradiction with Allah. <clears throat> I don't use common sense. Logic and common sense sometimes make no sense. And that's what Allah is telling me. Our youth, they may use common sense and logic. We should educate them not to use it when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something. A Prophet Musa a.s. when he arrived in the ship, what he said? You made a hole in the ship to drown the people. Common sense and logic is right. It's a common sense, it's logic, it's right. When he killed the child, what is it? You killed innocent child for no crime? Logic is right. Common sense is right. But what Allah, I didn't do it in my behalf. Allah is telling me to do that. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala me to do that, my common sense make no sense. When Allah is telling me to do something, my logic makes no logic. Imagine if a Prophet Nuh السلام, used his logic or his common sense. Now we are in Alexandria. How far is the ocean from here? How far? 300 miles. Huh? About like 300 miles. 300 miles. How about we're going to invest some money and make uh, over here a submarine? Anybody will invest money in that? Huh? No one of you? Why? It makes no sense. The Prophet Nuh, السلام, where did he build the ship? In the, in, in the shore or in the desert? On the land. Imagine if we use common sense, which one will be alive today? Which one of us? The whole living things, animals and human beings are not existing. The flood washed away everything. Common sense. Sometimes common sense makes no sense when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something. I don't use my common sense. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling me. Tell me the youth, you should educate them. Let them learn not to use common sense. A youth will come and they'll ask me, a Sheikh, I passed gases. Why do I have to wash my face? What do, huh? I use the bathroom. Why do I have to wash my face? What does this have to do with this? Common sense. But it makes no sense. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say do it. You see how? So we have to educate those children. Not to use common sense, not to use logic, not all the time. My common sense makes sense. Not all the time my logic is logic. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that said, What the most knowledgeable in the creation? The creator. That said, Subhanallah. Then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Talked about who? Dhul Qarnayn. I'm going to jump a little bit. I don't, I don't want to go in detail because it might be boring to go two, three hours lecture. The youth are in the Fa'ul al-Kahf. MashaAllah, Jazakumullah khair. The Fa'ul al-Kahf. Allah, Jazakumullah khair. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. InshaAllah, we talk about the other issues. The end of the I'm sorry, we start to talk before we come, but inshallah we continue to share. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about Dhul Qarnayn. What's the relationship of the incident of Dhul Qarnayn with the youth? Look how. Yes, Alunuk and Dhul Qarnayn. They ask about Dhul Qarnayn. 
What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? إِنَّ أَتَيْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ سَبَبَ فَأَتْبَعَ سَبَبَ We gave him everything he need to do anything and accomplish anything he wants. If somebody will give someone everything he need to accomplish anything he wants, what does he need from me? Tell me. Huh? Nothing? Huh? Nothing, right? Allah gave him everything. Why he needs my help? Now, when Dhul Qarnayn visited the village from the east all the way to the west, the people they came and they complained to him about Ya'juz and Ma'juz, right? Anybody remember the verse that they say, Ali Dhul Qarnayn, Ya'juz, Ma'juz, anybody can tell me that? Anybody remember that verse? Yeah. Go ahead. هل نجعل لك بيننا وبينهم خرجا الله is telling us I gave him everything he need when they came to complain they didn't complain they stopped they offer هل نجعل لك خرجا can we make a budget for you? All the time we complain about the youth. Huh? When the last time I came with the, to the Imam, I gave him $10,000 check, let's make a project for the youth. I should not complain. I should offer. Allah teaches me another lesson. Don't complain. Offer, what can you do? He gave him everything. He doesn't need the help of no human being. But still the people they came, Hal najal laka kharja. Those are mischiefing group. They're attacking us, are spoiling our community. Let's make a budget for you, Yadul Qardain, that you prevent them from doing that. Five dollar, five thousand dollar check to the imam. Let's make a summer camp for them. I don't want them to go outside, see and hear outside. Our youth, like any other children, they need activity. Why not? Why my son is uh, to be different than others? Why my son is not interested to play video game? Why my son is not interested to play uh, uh, bowling? Why? He's like any other son. He's like any other. Did I make any project for them? A replacement. Where's the replacement before I complain? Look now, Dul Qarnayn, how did he answer? How did he answer? When they offered him a budget, did he say, I don't need it? Allah gave me everything. What did he say? Ainuni. عنوني بقوة ما مكلني فيه ربي خير he said that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he admitted whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me is better than anything you're going to give me but but what still you have to do your job عنوني بقوة help me with your full strength not if we have activity over here somebody come for five minutes folding couple of chairs and leave. I did something. Yazallah khair. He fold a couple chairs. But this is Ayyununi Biquwa. It's your full strength. It's not full strength. Allah is teaching me another lesson. Even Dul Qarnay admitted that whatever Allah gave me is better than anything else. You can't even do whatever Allah has given me. But still, I need your help for full strength. Do you have Sunday school over here? Yes, not Sunday school, but Maktab. They come two days a week. So five, five hours for And they have three different yeah. levels. They come in the car, the parent. They drop him and they leave, right? Mm -hmm. Babysitter. 
is cooler babysitter now. Why not park my car and come help the Imam? Help the teacher. I know the I'm sorry to say it. What time does school start? After school, what time they start? 6 p.m. 6 p.m. And what time do they finish? 8.30. 8.30. How many children will be waiting till quarter to nine and nine o'clock the parents come pick them up? They're on time. Very, very few. Very few. Very few. So sometimes people, mm -hmm. one or two. This is If I am the parent not taking it serious, why my son to take it serious? Huh? Be the right model and the straight path. The follower will be with you on the first straight path. Why the father or the mother has to come and hang the horn to let him get out? Why not to step in and to pray with him over here? Pick up and drop off, huh? Maybe sitting or what? SubhanAllah. Get my son here and cut inside. Even if I have nothing to do, I sit on the table and read some Quran. How I'm going to teach my son and my daughter that what is he learning in school is useful? Where's going to use it? He's going to be a doctor. He's going to be an engineer. He's going to be a pharmacist. Where's he going to use the Quran? In the clinic? Where's he going to use it? In the pharmacy? I'm not going to use the Quran there. Daddy, you are teaching me that useless. He's right. Useless, because I'm not using it myself. Only in Ramadan we do khidmah. And what's after Ramadan? <laughs> so, Daddy, why are you wasting my time? You put me in that school four days, four hours a week, and then, then after I'll be finishing the Quran. We put it in the shelf until Ramadan. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ended Surah Al-Kahf by a very important verse. I'm not going to do it because I have a children or I don't have. I don't want to do it and help the community to establish Islamic education for the youth, as I said in the beginning of my talk. Allah blocked the hearing and the vision, why? But the source of education, right? So I want to protect their source of education, not because I have children. Yeah, Sheikh, I'm not married. Why do I have to worry about that? Yeah, Sheikh, I'm an old man. My children, oh, they are grown. One of them is 40 years and the other one 50 years. We are not going to do it because of our children. I'm going to do it because of the sake of the Islam. I'm going to do it because of the future of the Islam. I'm going to do it just for the sake of Allah. قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلِكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيْهِ إِنَّمَا إِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَى مُوَى فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلٌ صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكُ بِعِذْبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا See how Allah ended? He said, I'm going to do it. For what? For the sake of Allah, not for any other reason. Any other reason is shirk. Even I'm going to do for my son. Even I'm going to do for my daughter. I'm going to do it just for the sake of Allah. Whether I have children or not. I have to worry about the future of this land. I have to worry about the future of the offspring. I have to worry about the future of the this masjid. I'm not going to worry about my son only. That's selfish. Remember in my khutbah, if I'm not beneficial to others, I'm a failure. I have to be beneficial for others. 
other people are to get benefits out of me. If not my son, your son. If it's not my daughter, your daughter. Because my son is yours and yours is mine. My daughter is yours and yours are mine. I worry about the offspring. That what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ended the surah. Make it for the sake of Allah. Don't make it any shirk for any other reason. Just to please Allah. Allahumma ja'alna sa'al wajr al-karim wa khalas ya rabbil alam. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala followed all these instructions for the kahf, what was the result? Look the result. إِنْ يَظْهَرُ عَلَيْكُمْ يَرْجُمُوكُمْ أَوْ يُعِيدُوكُمْ فِي مِلَّتِهِمْ وَلَنْ تُثْلُحُ إِذًا أَبَدًا Allah is saying that. If they will be stronger than your defense, you will never be successful. There is the attack and there is the defense. Whatever we complain is what? The attack. Did I prepare those youth to have a strong defense? This external education, jingle bains and Easter bunny laying eggs, and this fashion outside, all that is education. The nature of the human being is to copy and adopt that the nature of the human being. They are adopting from outside. Not because they want to do that. Because I didn't prepare the defense for them. To train them to have a strong defense. Then the attack will fail. Either I fail or the attack will fail. The defense in my hand. Now when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected their education, their iman, and the strength, their defense, what happened to the end? They're going to do masjid on their behalf now. This is the same group that they're worrying about the society to attack them. Now, the society will build a masjid in their behalf. You see the difference? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Kahf is telling me exactly how to protect the youth and the offspring to be a only practicing Muslim. Are we doing our job? Stop blaming it in the youth. Can I see anything happening in this society bad, whatever, drugs, gangs, prostitution, name it, was not happening in Quraysh? Tell me. Tell me one thing, that nowadays the bad society practicing Quraysh was not the practice. What is the tribe? Let me be honest. What does it mean tribe? It's a sugar-coated name of a gang. <laughs> Attacking each other, stealing each other, roughing each other. Right? It's a gang against each other. But they don't want to say gang. They say tribe. Okay. Gangs. Drinking? Nobody can drink more than Quraysh. Prostitution? All of them are womanizers. But tell me one thing. That, that Nowadays, society is doing that what I shouldn't do. Why Abdullah ibn Omar is different? Son of Umar ibn Khattab. He did whatever Surah Al-Kaf is doing. Huh?
all these Sahaba, why their children, they being raised in the middle of the bad society and they were leaders of the Islam. Well, the Muslim, look at their life. You will see whatever I was talking about, the Kaf, they practice it. They implement it in their life. This Quran, this Quran is guiding us to the right solution. I don't need no sociologist and no psychiatrist and no psychologist and no scientist to tell me what to do to protect my children. Allah told me what to do. Who is more knowledgeable about the creation more than the creator? So Allah is telling me that incident in Surah Al-Kahf is not to be a story. Allah is not a storyteller. Allah is telling me that to implement it in my life and not to worry about my children, worry about myself, what I'm doing to my children. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لكم الله معلمنا ما ينفعنا ينفعنا بأن ننتنى اللهم جل معلمتنا حجة لنا لا حجة علينا اللهم هات أنفسنا تقواها وزكية خير من زكاها أنت غلي مولاها فانصر على من عداها ربنا لا توحدنا نشينا وأخطأنا